Moving the Miller's Mini Moor Mine Mansion, a true story, by Dave Eggers, illustrated by Julia Sarda. Like all the best stories, this takes place in Idaho. In the 1870s, prospectors roamed Idaho looking for gold and silver. In Bellevue, a small town in the bottom half of Idaho, they found silver. Actually, one of the most important finds of all wasn't found by a human. It was found by a dog. This particular dog was chasing a particular gopher around when the gopher ducked into a hole. Probably his home. The dog did not give up there, though. He dug and dug into the gopher hole. But instead of finding the gopher, he found silver. Word of the silver spread far and wide, and the small hole the gopher made turned into a much larger hole made by men. The man who owned the mine was named John Minnie Moore, so it became known as the Minnie Moore Mine. A few years later, a man from England, which was and is an island nation quite far from Idaho, arrived and bought this land where the dog had chased the gopher, the Minnie Moore mine. The man who bought the mine was named Henry Miller, and he hoped the mine would still be full of silver and would make him rich. He was not wrong. He got so much silver out of what started as a gopher hole that he had all the silver he needed and became one of the wealthiest men in England or Idaho or both combined. We can assume that the mine was then known as Miller's Mini Moore Mine. It only makes sense. But Miller was alone, and he did not want to be alone. He wanted to be married, so he went looking for a wife. Soon, he met a young woman named Annie, and they agreed to marry. Annie had never left the country, had never left Idaho, in fact. So for a wedding present, Henry sent her to Europe, so she could see all the history and culture and food, which, according to many, many experts, was better than that which was available in Idaho in 1880. While Annie was gallivanting about Europe, which is what you do in Europe, by the way, you gallivant, it's just a kind of traipsing, Henry was determined to build his new wife a lavish new house. When she got back, he had built her a large Victorian home in the town called Bellevue. It was the most impressive and stately mansion for miles. It had three floors and high ceilings and stained glass windows. In a region where many people were still living in small shacks and even tents, this home brought a bit of old world civility to the Old West, which was often not so civil. The home, we can assume, was known to some, if not all, as the Miller's Mini Moore Mine Mansion. Henry and Annie lived there happily for years, and soon enough welcomed a son, Douglas, who played along the riverside. The house was on the riverside, mind you, and rode horses on the vast open land around the home. There's no better place for horses than Idaho. Any horse will tell you that. They are truthful animals, 
and are especially truthful when it comes to real estate. But sadness came to the Miller's Mini Moore Mine Mansion. Soon after the turn of the century, Henry died, leaving Annie and Douglas alone. Then things got worse. Annie was tricked by a crooked banker who convinced her to put all her money into his bank. Then the bank went bankrupt, something banks occasionally do. And Annie and Douglas had nothing but their home. Annie needed to find a way to make money, so she did what most of us might do in that situation. She decided to raise pigs. With her last few dollars, she bought a bunch, gaggle her uh, pigs, and planned to breed and sell them. But there was one catch. The town of Bellevue did not allow its residents to keep livestock in their yards. There is, some say, a particular smell to cows and pigs and sheep, and that smell is not considered wonderful. So Annie had to make a choice. Either she would stay in Bellevue in the home her beloved lost husband had built for her, or she would leave her with her pigs, the only way to provide for her son. In the end, she decided she didn't need to choose. See, your narrator just tricked you. Annie decided to simply move the house from Bellevue to a spot just outside, just outside town, which had no prohibitions on poor scene pursuits. Your narrator just said it was simple to move the house, but it was not simple. It was very complicated. Here's what Annie Miller did, with, of course, the help of her son and the workers they hired. The house had been assembled atop a foundation made of hundreds of stones, and the first thing the workers did was to draw numbers on every one of these stones. Why? Don't ask why. You will learn why soon enough. After numbering all the stones, they removed them carefully while replacing them with enormous logs. Why would they replace the stones with logs? This I can tell you right now. Because logs roll. Yes, Annie Miller and her son and the workers they hired actually planned to roll the house four miles down the road to a place where pigs were acceptable. And accepted. And this is what they did. They placed the enormous logs under the house. Then they attached the house to a team of horses. And these horses pulled the house as the logs rolled underneath. This actually happened. And every time the house moved about six feet, the workers moved the logs from the back of the house to the front, and it all started over again. Oh, boy. Again and again, they rolled and replaced, rolled and replaced. The move took about a month, and the ride was so smooth that Annie and Douglas were able to live in the house all the while. They actually did this. They even had a cook who cooked three meals a day for them, in the house which was rolling down the road. The pigs, we assume, followed along behind. When the house finally arrived at the new site on a large plot of land by the Big Wood River, which was and is a real river in Idaho, the workers reassembled the stone foundation exactly as it had been before. How? Using the numbers they'd drawn on the stones, of course. Idahoans are so smart.
Then they placed the house atop the stones, and it was precisely as it had been before, only four miles down the way, four miles away, and surrounded by pigs. The Miller's Many More Mine Mansion stood there for decades, and in fact it stands there today. And Annie and Douglas lived and thrived there for many years, as did the pigs. Until, of course, they were eaten. The end. <laughs>